Hello, welcome to Helena Coffee. Today I will introduce you to physical changes during roasting. Let's watch this video together. Although the seeds decrease the quantity of water at the same rate throughout the roasting process, the initial stage of the roasting process is often referred to as the drying phase. The chlorophyll degradation leads the seeds to change color from blue to yellow within minutes after roasting the head. The Maillard process causes the roots to change color from yellow to yellow and eventually brown as they burn. The brown hue of the seeds will darken when they reach the first crack owing to the caramelization process. Carbonization may become black during dark roasting. Classic definitions of roast degree. The seeds change color from yellow to tan, then brown, and if roasted long enough, extraordinarily dark and black. There is no standard method for identifying various roasts. One roaster calls a light roaster, another calls a full city roaster. Light roasts include fruity, flowery, acidic, and more delicate tastes than dark roasts, as well as a more petite body. Smoky, pungent, bitter, and carbon tastes are produced by doctor. When roasted to a high degree, the fire flavor takes over, and the body diminishes. The lack of agreed-upon nomenclature regarding roasting levels in the coffee business generates misunderstandings among roasters and consumers. I don't claim to have the definitive definition for various roasting degrees. When coffee roasts, the pressure within the grain rises as vapor and CO2 are produced, causing the grain structure to expand and the hole to grow. The seeds begin to release silver-colored skin, or chaff, a few minutes before first crack and trap it within the folds of their central fissures. When cellulose can no longer dilate, cracks develop within and on the particle's surface, allowing steam and vigorous gases to escape, resulting in the popping sound of the first break. Specialty roasters want a light or medium roast that discharges the grain between the end of the first crack and the beginning of the second crack. The gas generation continues after the first fracture, replenishing the pressure within the particle cell. The granular structure becomes increasingly brittle at the same time, preparing for the second fracture. While the rise of steam pressure is the original cause of the first fracture, the accumulation of CO2 is the primary cause of the second break. The oil escapes to the grain surface just before or after the commencement of the second crack, Almost all roasters will pay attention to this as an objective signal of the dark roast's target temperature. Throughout the two cracking phases, particle expansion and drainage of steam and gases degrade the cellulose structure of the particles, making them hollow and brittle. The grain is darker, hollower, crunchier, and more developed on the inside. For optimum crushing quality, multiple, high glass extraction, and the elimination of unwanted savory tastes, proper seed development is required. Bean size, density, and weight loss. When roasted, the coffee loses 12 to 14 percent of its weight, depending on the moisture content at the start, the roasting phase, and the development of the seeds throughout roasting. Sources discharged during the last stages of the first crack and lost the average volume, or shrinkage contraction, in the range of 11 to 13 percent may provide the lightest delicious roasts. Shrinkage is about 14 to 16 percent 30 seconds after the first crack stops and around 17 to 18 percent at the commencement of the second crack. Black roasting oil may have a percentage of 22 percent or higher. The presently popular light roast loses 14 to 16% of its original weight in the specialty business.